the next panel is as you'll see in a minute, is obviously about streaming. And I think that's a rather, I think we have some surprising answers for how um, streaming may evolve in the coming days. Are we all mic'd up? Then let's bring out the panel. <clears throat> uh, well, you've, you've already met Emma, Melissa Kogerman um, and Tom Burt. I'm sorry, and Tom Burt canceled. This is Goran Stomczyk from yes. Barco. Yes. How badly did I say that? And, uh, Go Goran, uh, and last, but certainly not least, is Graham Sperling. Hi, Nick. Graham runs one of the largest, if not the largest, cinemas in, ah, in stop, Dublin. Stop, stop, stop. And he's promised to behave. <laughs> I always behave. <clears throat> well, uh, Melissa, you've already introduced yourself. Go on, uh, tell us what you do at yeah, Barco. So, uh, I'm a senior product manager in Barco, uh, tasked with uh, developing uh, projectors, laser projectors in the last years. And uh, I've been involved uh, in cinema since 2011, so about nine years now, uh, 10 years almost, yeah. And you, sir? Um, I'm Graham Sperling. I'm Joint Mind Director of Movies at Cinemas in Ireland. Um, we have four sites varying from 12 screens down to four screens. And we were the first <coughs> cinema, I claim, in Europe to go fully digital with no 35 mil backup in 2009. <coughs> Brave man. Um, the topic is streaming, but before we get to that, there are other um, ideas that are competing with movie theaters. Companies like Bel Air out of Barcelona that you, you were involved with. Mm -hmm. and, and for people who aren't aware of them, describe what Bel Air offers. So Bel Air Cinema is a, a, a small company that um, supplies day and date releases to ultra high net worth individuals. People like uh, shakes, oligarchs, Premiership footballers, people we don't know generally, I'd say, <laughs> um, who either can't or don't, won't go to the cinema for security reasons or celebrity reasons and, and so on. And they're prepared to pay huge amounts of money to see Star Wars at the same time as everybody else in, in their own home. So, uh, so it's a small market, but it is a very lucrative one. And uh, I think Barco's involved somewhat with the, those companies. Uh, yes, so we, um, we have a, a market division called high-end residential uh, and we go through specialist uh, channels uh, for that market. So uh, typically that market would request a digital cinema projector, and, um, but not just any digital cinema projector. It has to be handcrafted, it has to be very special uh, for that market. So uh, indeed, um, the, the high net worth individuals are... Uh, um, uh, looking after uh, getting the best piece of equipment they can, uh, they can get. Well, to streaming the topic, <clears throat> there was an article in Hollywood Reporter eight days ago. Um, Sony Pictures and Netflix are partnering on a, on a deal in the UK, um, and very little information is heard about it, but uh, I'd be curious to see how that, ro how that rolls out. But you're the exhibitor here. What are your thoughts on streaming? Well, I, I think there's, there's something very important to, to get out here first, is that um, we now have three streaming options. We have Netflix, Amazon, Disney+. Plus. All who are competing now for this, this lucrative streaming market. The issue I have is that cinema, as a, as a general collective term, is giving far too much credence to the importance of Netflix to cinema by garnering headlines to papers by saying, we're refusing to play Netflix because they won't protect the window. This is, with all due respect, about as welcome as a fart in a spacesuit. It's, it's just getting crazy now. We are going, these people are going to eat their own lunch and we should not be the people bringing their meal to their table. All right. So. It's interesting that the release, the release windows in, uh, according to the European Audiovisual Observatory, um, the release windows keep shrinking in Europe, uh, much more so than the US. Is that gonna be a factor in well, streaming going we're, forward? We're, we're still operating in the UK and Ireland on 13 weeks. Okay. Um, 
and by and large, every film that opens on any given Friday is available to anybody who wants it. There is no restriction on who plays on the opening week, other than the fact that they might say, it won't take any money there, don't bother. Um, when a film, even a big film like Star Wars that opened a short while ago, in my four screen cinema, it was finished after week three. The audience was so small, at a high percentage rate, I was better off dumping it. So, it doesn't even get to play as 13 weeks. So the, the window in Ireland, the UK, is not as critical to, as I heard earlier on from Kim, the German market, where there seems to be a scale as to what stage it will release, it will, it will <coughs> reach certain cinemas. Right. But I can only fight my own corner, so I played the Irishman. Um, I got a phone call from an exhibitor saying you might get a phone call from X about playing the Irishman. I said I've had the phone call already, I've booked it. I got called all the various rude words under the sun for selling the cinema business short and not protecting the window and people look up to us and then two days later he booked it himself for his own circuit because everyone else was playing it. But the Irishman in Ireland, with all the publicity, it was a no-brainer. You played it. I filled it in the two and a half weeks before its release on streaming and I was still filling it into week five. So the streaming had no effect. Um, but, but they wanted me to play a package of five films, which include Married Story, Two Popes, The King, I can't remember what else, uh, The Laundromat. And I said, no, I'm taking the one with all the hype, right. and you can have the rest. So I played the one with the hype, took loads of money, did a good deal on percentages and walked away. And I don't see why anyone around the world could not have done the same thing. But that's just me. Do you think... Uh, Melissa, do you think it's going to evolve on a case-by-case -case basis? How do you see this working out? Yeah, I think, I, I think it's, there's a level of hysteria. I think Graham's right, and I think it's, it's being overplayed. I don't think it's as, as serious as people are saying. And, and that report you were talking about, the Ernst & Young report that came out a week or two ago, it did cite that the sort of people who are streaming large amounts of content online are also the same sort of people who are going to the cinema a lot. And it goes down a sliding scale. So it's important to remember that Cinema guys are not just, they're not just stopping going to the cinema in order to absorb content, they're just absorbing more content. And that's really the point I wanted to make all along, is that these are all just different forms of content to absorb in, in a variety of different ways, and whether it's on your phone or whether it's on the big screen, I, I think it's, it's a case of just not being hyster too hysterical and taking a, a, looking at the long game. And um, th there's such a different experience to, to uh, even the same movie in... Uh... <coughs> in a cinema, or even a different cinema. I remember years ago I saw a film in suburban Chicago, and it, it was a, supposed to be a comedy, and it fizzled. And then I saw it um, like a month later in a very, um, I don't want to say cosmopolitan, I want to say diverse audience theater in um, New York City, and it was hilarious. I mean, really? the audience made the movie. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. The shared experience is something that can't be recreated at home. And, and you know, the, the, the 4D experience and the event cinema experience, all of these secret cinema experiences, it's all about getting people into a, into a room together to share that, that, that energy that it, in a collective environment you experience. And you can't experience that anywhere else. So I, I do think that this is a bit overhyped. This, uh, this, and we've been here before. This is old news. This, all the cinema's on its ass. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I just I don't think um, we need to worry as much as everyone's saying. And th I think the, the world experience is, um, is, is a real one. I think uh, when uh, people make a choice to go to the cinema, um, friends say, call up each other, say, let's go to the movies on Saturday night. They go there, okay, what's playing? They made a choice to go to the cinema first. <coughs> when people like me make a choice to go, uh, to go to the cinema with my kids, I chose the movie. But I made a choice to go to the cinema. So each case, people choose to go to the cinema because of the experience. I think that's uh, th there's a key word, what you get there, which you also saw in the previous um, uh, panel session, what you get there, what you experience, what you feel, emotional, uh, you know, physical, uh, smell, sight, sound, uh, uh, the, the whole story is a, uh, is a part of that. It was a very, <laughs> for me it was a very uh, funny moment uh, a couple of months ago uh, with, you know, with, with the release of The Irishman when uh, Martin Scorsese uh, uh, asked the viewers, I'll, I'll paraphrase it, I don't know the exact quote, please uh, 
Don't watch the movie on, uh, on an iPhone. That was watch hilarious. it at least on an iPad, a large iPad. <laughs> but I think he was supposed to say watch it in a cinema. I think yeah. that's a false, uh, I think that's a whole false narrative. My, my daughter is a millennial and she watches an awful lot of content yeah. on, a, on a notebook. But she goes to the movies all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one has nothing to do with the other. No. The same so, with Netflix. One so, has so nothing ne to do with Netflix the other. is not the enemy of cinema, like, like you, you know, many journalists uh, will, will uh, let, let people believe. The question is if cinema is the enemy of, of Netflix. So if e every Netflix movie would show the cinema, it would then, take no money. Then, then who would, who would pay 10, 12, 12 uh, euros per month to subscribe to Netflix? And I think the, the, the whole story about this is uh, where this is going to go. Uh, big time uh, with Disney Plus, with all studios uh, having streaming services. We hear the, uh, speak, uh, talk about in Belgium, uh, where I live, about the local uh, you know, streaming service and so on. There's going to be su su such a big competition that I think cinema will be inevitable uh, to, to that type of content as well. Well, and we should uh, let you um, fly your flag here a little bit. Um, thanks to technology like uh, Barco laser projectors and, and other companies like MX4D that we heard, movie theaters are better than they've ever been. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, a much and, better experience than it was even 10 years that's ago. That's true. I think uh, uh, that part of experience also started with, uh, you know, several years ago with, uh, with premium seating. That pays off uh, uh, quite well for, for cinemas. Right. We have uh, 4D uh, or say immersive uh, seating. We have laser projectors. When you look at, uh, at older uh, theaters, and revamping them with good new digital uh, solid state technology uh, in, in projection, new screens. I think the, the, the difference is just imman immense. And people do um, appreciate, notice and appreciate it. Uh, the only question is whether cinemas uh, then uh, uh, would promote it locally uh, through local media, radio, t uh, television, uh, billboards, whatever. Uh, so I think there was a question earlier on today about that thing. So it's not only promotion of content, I think it's also promotion of experience. Same, uh, uh, you know, if you go to, to other, to other uh, uh, sources of experience like opera, right. concerts, uh, music, and so on. I'll put you on the spot here. Oh. <laughs> We've been, uh, as, as uh, Melissa said correctly, this, this Netflix conversation is really getting old. It's old news. Does, does the whole streaming issue get resolved this year, next year? I, I think... And how does it get resolved? Well, I think the three big ones are going to now fight for space. Fight for cyberspace. Well, they're going to fight for afraid. your theater. No, I don't <clears throat> think they're going to fight for my theater, no. Um, Disney are going to put their own content out on their own platform, and it's not going to be available for cinema, or it's played in cinema. Amazon are producing their own content. So much is being distributed through other distributors with a window, it's, it's an Amazon film, but it's not sold to us as an Amazon film. And then you have Netflix, who got loads of hype last year for Roma, got more hype this year for The Irishman, and flopped at every award ceremony, with the exception of getting a Laura Dern Award for Marriage Story. The Netflix hype has sailed ever so slightly, and sitting there at $12.43 billion in debt, and looking at Jeff Bezos with pockets deeper than that, and Disney with pockets deeper than that, this whole is going to become a fight between the three of them for that space. And I don't think that Netflix are producing films of a high enough commercial quality to play with any longevity in theatres anyway. I mean, The Irishman was an exception, but it, 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 it took money, but it didn't take vast sums of money outside the major city centres in Ireland. Um, and it was the one with the hype, it was the one they thought would get loads of awards, it was the one that ended up with nothing. I wonder how much, and this is off the topic, but I wonder how much damage uh, Scorsese did with that whole um, Marvel hype, those aren't movies, this is, I mean, that's, that debate was resolved long ago, um, I thought. But Hollywood's always made movies like Marvel. I mean, what was, what was Tarzan? What was the original Robin Hood if they weren't the uh, Marvel movies of their day? Yeah. My, my but, father fell in love with movies with, uh, uh, but, but with uh, Buck Rogers. But cinema cannot survive without commercially successful no, films. of course not. And if that means it's got to be a Marvel-esque type film, then so be it. But it can also be A Little Women, or it could be a 1917, 
all of which are huge, or it could be one with longevity like Jojo Rabbit, or Le Mans, which we only took, I only took off screen last week. It was playing that long. Oh. And also, and I blow my own trumpet on this one, my 69 weeks I played consecutively with The Greatest Showman. That's what cinema is about. Yeah. And you don't, you don't get, this is not chuck away, you're making an effort to go out and partake in this. I have Netflix at home, my kids watch Netflix, I've watched half an episode of Peaky Blinders and I've never switched it on since. Is there no interest? <laughs> um, I'm speechless. Um, I have Netflix I, at home and I watch uh, Star Trek, the original. <laughs> I would do that, yeah. But you, uh, you should be in politics. You didn't answer my question. Do you think it'll get resolved uh, this year? No, it, it can't get resolved this year because it's, there's, there's too much happening. Resolved as in, is there going to be a resolution with cinema, or are they going yeah. to resolve... Re 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 yeah. Um, I don't think, in looking at their upcoming content, that Netflix have anything to offer us that would be commercially viable and, and take the risk of a two-and-a-half-week window. The Amazon ones we will get given by other distributors, smaller distributors, and we'll play as ordinary movies on their own merit and there'll be a window in that. So I don't think the, the cinema thing gets resolved. And it's also a bigger issue because in the States, for argument's sake, where the window is hugely important in order for it to filter down, a bit like Kim was saying about Germany, there are places, as we spoke about in One Horse Town, Nebraska, who may never get Star Wars because by the time week 12 comes along, right. everyone's bloody seen it. So um, that's why Netflix has a market because people can see new product, not cinema product, but new product without having to wait. Um, but does it resolve itself? No, it doesn't. But, um, but that market is only going to intensify. That's, Melissa, uh, you, used, you used to work with Disney, did you not? Yeah. Because yeah. I have my my thinking on Disney is I wonder to what extent they'll be um, pigeonholed by their brand, because because the, the, the Disney brand is very recognizable, especially for younger audiences. Can they outgrow that? Yes, but look at the brands they own as well. I mean, they, Star Wars is also a recognizable brand, and Pixar is a recognizable brand. I don't think that's an issue. I think if, any, if they have any kind of disruptors on the horizon, it's other copycat studios that are going to do the same. And then I see a point where you're going to get too many subscription models on the market, and not enough of them are sustainable, because not everybody's got... You're talking maybe 40, 50 pounds a month to subscribe to all these studios, and Netflix, and Amazon, and Google Play, and, and YouTube, and all that. I mean, it's, it's eye-watering, and if you're a parent, there's, there's, there's only so much disposable income available. And then you've got to go to the cinema on top of that in half term. So this, this is going to be a critical mass, I think, at some point, and it will, it will collapse in on itself, and there'll be mergers again. I think all these things go in cycles, so. and we're getting to a point where there's a plethora of options, and then they'll just consolidate. That's what I think. I think I'm going to open to the audience for questions. Oh, great, we can go, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there we go. We have two. Uh, yeah, don't, don't make me throw it. <laughs> uh, you first. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. Oh. <coughs> That's like the old me pitch of the season, Nick. Coming apart. <laughs> um, not so much a question as an observation. Um, in the UK, Parasite was acquired for distribution by Curzon. Artificial Eye, which normally, when they have a title, they release it in their cinemas and on their uh, uh, pay video on demand platform. They didn't do that for Parasite. They paid a lot of money for it. And now it's going on to become probably the most successful um, foreign language title ever released in UK cinema. So does that tell us anything about day and date, or is it just a one-off? Well, nobody knows anything, that's what I oh, think. Sorry. Well, where Parasite is concerned, um, number one, I wasn't aware Curzon had picked it up uh, or, or that they hadn't put it out on video on demand on the same day. It was picked up, it was offered to me by an Irish distributor and it was offered for the 14th and I said I wouldn't play it, I didn't think it was a market for me because I reckon 1970 when the Oscar on the Sunday nights. So on the Monday morning he rang me, he offered me less show restrictions and a better terms for week two. So I play week two. I still, it'll do okay, but it's, it's an art house audience. The multiplex audiences, they may think they like to go and see Korean films that have just won Oscars, but by and large, it's a very small number. 
Parasite will be the most successful Korean film I've ever shown in my cinemas. It'll also be the worst performing one because I've only shown one. Um, but um, Parasite's unique. You know, I, it, I, I really didn't think it would win the Oscar. I wouldn't be surprised if they got a BAFTA, but I was surprised they got the Oscar. But video on demand, I won't play curse and stuff. I don't play curse and stuff anyway, um, unless it's exceptionally, potentially marketable for me. And I, I pick them on a, a, a movie by movie basis. Does that answer your, without being too political, Nick, no? Was that an answer? <laughs> I think it's another example of this whole industry that nobody knows anything, isn't it? I mean, that's what makes it exciting and unpredictable. So, yeah, a long way that continue. It'd be really dull if we could predict everything. I didn't hear that, but sorry. <laughs> long may it continue. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows sorry. anything, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Should they, if this business was easy, everyone would be in it. So, it'd be, yeah. you know, that's where the fun, that's yeah. where the fun is. <laughs> that makes my uh, question a bit redundant, but... <laughs> uh, you were talking about Netflix and Irishman and Marriage Story, which are... I can't hear you, sorry. We were talking about the Irishman, Marriage Story, with small uh, theatrical windows. Yeah. Because they're relatively small. And this is also a question about the future show. Um, but don't you have any fear that Disney Plus will experiment with theatrical windows in the well, future? Well, I, I, I made this because point outside earlier, outside from Reverend Coffey, and, and Kim was making the, the point how they'd made their stand against the Irishman and the German theatres didn't pick it up. Um, as did a lot of UK theatres not pick it up. Um, the time may come if Disney's subscription levels are not where they want them to be. That, and it's quite unlikely, but it's not beyond the bounds of possibility, that let's say Black Widow 2 comes along and the subscription numbers are not where they want them to be, they could just as easily say, we're going Disney Plus and theatres on the same day. Now, it's easy to make a stand against the Irishman because Netflix are a simple little thing to kick down the road. But when you have to make the decision of not taking a big movie from Disney, then your world changes completely. Yep. And yes, I was offered I'd play it. It can be streamed all it likes. Mm -hmm. Of course I'd play it. But that, we haven't had to make that decision yet. We haven't had that big commercial <laughs> film that we're all waiting for that's suddenly going to be out on someone's laptop the same day. So that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. I would give an example there where there's been quite a few event cinema releases where the BBC, for example, have shown Doctor Who yeah. simultaneously on TV, but they, and they made $10.3 million at the box office worldwide in a weekend. And all these and major, on TV. And all these major multiplexes who complain about day and date releases are quite yeah. happy to play Doctor Who, not only day and date, but at the exact same time. Yeah. You know, so you can't have your cake and eat it. There were stances made against BAFTA for giving Roma the best film award last year, we're going to take our funding from BAFTA by various... <laughs> these are all political statements. This is all, just, this is all today's newspaper, tomorrow ch tomorrow's chip paper. The more we feed this fire of the popularity and danger Netflix and others present, the greater the threat appears. And trust me, on the back of the best 12 months in cinema history, what are we complaining about? I know. You know, I mean, it, we're... UK's best year for 25 years. States, it's, is it nine years in a row they've topped 11 billion, 42.6 billion worldwide? I mean, these are massive numbers. Yeah. You know, so, um, and we managed to do that without one single Netflix release. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, we're not doing too bad. Mm. <laughs> I think we're going to have to end it here. But, uh, let's thank the panel for the. It's okay, insights. I'll be bringing the microphone in with me. We can have a chat later on. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you all for uh, coming. Thank you. Yep.